Why well, hello everybody, this is Lotus Animations, and today we will be doing a tutorial on how to make this wallpaper. It was asked in the comments that you guys would like to see this, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I chose this one over some of the other requests because it's really easy, so let's step right into it. So first things first, you're just going to use X to delete that cube. My um, key should be in the bottom here, so if I forget to tell you anything, but shift A. Add an icosphere, go down here to the subdivisions, make it 4, and then you're going to shift D, click, shift D, click. So now there should be three spheres here. Don't even have to select it, just grab that one that you just did and scale it up, doesn't matter how big right now. Go into your modifiers tab, open your modifiers tab, and do wireframe, and as you can see, it takes all of the edges and vertices and gets rid of the faces. Take this thickness and put it to 0 .004. It's just so it's real thin. And then grab the other sphere, doesn't matter which one because they're going to be the same size. Add a modifier and do another wireframe. And now you can see that's kind of around it. We want it to be slightly in it, so do S to scale, and scale it down to where it's just poking out just a little bit. About there should do. And now, with this one selected, I want you to go up here, click on this, and name this Cut. Grab this one, name it Wireframe, and then grab, uh, let's see. Okay, that is cut, and then this one, just name it Sphere, and I misspelled that, one second, Sphere, okay, now the reason I did that is because the next modifier we're going to be using, we will be putting on Sphere, and we will need the Boolean modifier, and I needed that so I could realize that I needed this cut one. And now you can see it's it's all sorts of messed up. It's really funky and weird. That is why we're going to go over here instead of intersect. We'll do difference. And what that does is that makes this wireframe cut in to this sphere and deform the mesh. So now if we apply that, grab this cut one and delete it. Now we have these crevices in our regular sphere. And now you can already see that we're getting pretty close to uh, what I had in my wallpaper. I'm just going to delete this lamp because we don't need it. Now grab this, go into tab mode, hit 1 to go into front view, and then you're going to need to do face select. And how I did the um, the different ones sticking out is I just selected random ones and I try to get a lot on the sides because you do the more you do on the sides the more it really gets broken up and doesn't look so circular but you can still tell it's a ball if you do them all in the center it's still gonna I mean it's gonna look cool no matter what but it's just not gonna um, deform the shape as much but what I did is I grabbed a few went down here and instead of, and the pivot point being instead of the medium point you put it to the 3d cursor so that it goes straight out and you just S to scale and scale it out a little bit. And you're just going to do that a lot. Try and only grab these faces. If you grab other stuff it might mess it up. And you can scale them inward to give them a little bit of depth. And you're just going to do that a few times. Pretty good. Okay, I think I can live with that. So now I'm gonna go one to go into front view, do a control alt numpad zero, and that'll put the camera looking straight on at what I've been messing with. I'm gonna hit in, lock camera to view, and just scroll out to where it's all in the view. Alright, I think I can live with that. Looks pretty good. Now, 
what you want to do is shift add a plane push it down here go to right view with numpad 3 and oop, deselect the cursor one go back to the median point and now scale this out real big once you've done that rotate it just a little bit and then it should go about halfway something like that it can go up a little higher go up a little bit and we can go down a little bit doesn't really matter go into your world oh sorry about that now we need to go into cycles because we're starting to do materials and stuff use nodes and bring that down to black now grab either one of these because they're the same material go into the material and do new and anisotropic VSDF and now I'm just gonna show you what the material should look similar to it's gonna look like this metally kind of feel take the roughness and put it to a 0.05 that's the that's the number that I've uh, found works the best with these and now just match up that material and so now if you rendered this it wouldn't really look like anything because you don't have any lights and the lights are what really make the scene because you need that lights to be acting up and shooting off different things so what I did is I brought it forward a little bit went to third view rotated it up hit five so that I can see a little bit going to orthographic so everything's a little bit more neat and tidy went into top view faced it toward it okay and then I'm gonna scale it up a little bit I'm just going to kind of line it up to its flat to me, angle it down. Now, what I'm going to do is going to do 7, change my pivot point back to the 3D cursor, select this, Shift D, and now do Rotate. And this will just make it easy to put it on the other side. Alright. So that's generally where it needs to be. Um, now you're going to make a new material for these and do emission. I'm going to say probably about a 2.5 from there, somewhere somewhere around there. It might be a little too dim, might be a little too hot, I don't know. Go back in your camera view, make sure that your planes are not in anywhere. And now if we give this a quick render, all right, it's already looking pretty close to what I have. I mean, it's just terrible quality right now. Okay. So, I think this needs to be drugged back a little bit because I don't want to see a hard line like this. So, and these might be angled too much. Seven. So that it can only be rotated along that axis. Okay, now let's give that a render. Okay, there we go. Now you can't see the line as easily. Um, and now, if you want a little bit more radical bits, yeah, that looks pretty close. Um, and that's basically it. Um, and if you guys want to, uh, really see it you're gonna have to bump up the resolution if you wanted this to just be wallpaper I always like to do 3840 by 2160 and that's twice the time of 1080p resolution it's 4k resolution and uh, it just looks really good and then I'll do I don't know 200 samples that should be fine because if you're going to do a wallpaper, you really want it to look pretty nice. If you're going to do an animation, you wouldn't set the samples so high. But with a with a wallpaper, you only have to render it once, so why not why not go big? Um, so I'll pause the video, and then I'll come back when this is all rendered out. Alright guys, there we go. It's all rendered out, and uh, it looks okay. The uh, only thing I might want to change is I would possibly want to change the light, uh, the uh, light emission amount a little lower 
Um, that's just your call, though. You guys might want it brighter. But that was it. Um, so now you can basically make this wallpaper. Um, I think it looks cool. It looks uh, great on a desktop, great on a phone. I don't know, whatever you guys want to use it for. I hope this tutorial has been useful. I hope you got to learn about the modifiers and different things involved. Um, thanks for watching. This has been Lotus Animations. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.